visuals, man. When it came time to shoot those visuals for Hit the Flow and Vogue and stuff like that, what was it like getting those big budget videos going on? Mm. I hate it now. <laughs> what? Man, 200 some thousand for a video. You know my class field yeah. with shooting them videos and shit, bro. When nine motherfuckers got an iPhone and a GoPro. <laughs> <laughs> bro, and that 200 some thousand gonna come out of your money before you see anything. Uh, all, it, it was all a game. Yeah. Right? You know what I'm saying? And it was set up for us to lose. It was set up for the artists to lose. You know, it's a tax write-off for the company. Yeah. They put 200000 in you. Then they gonna get it back. Yeah. It's just so much with that shit, man, that if we could have did it different, it's a few things we would change. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But uh, them, them big budget videos, like looking back at it now, it, it, one thing about it I say, it, it, it put us in a different region. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Them big videos, the videos was important back then. Exactly. Right? These motherfuckers doing videos now, you don't even see, I don't even watch videos. I don't watch them now. Yeah, like yeah. when station videos even come on, you feel me? Exactly. Go and watch them. Back then, you watched them because you had the box. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So so you're being seen on, uh, uh, not you on TV city. raps, rap yeah. city and shit yeah. in the basement. Exactly. It meant something. But it still was so fucking high to spend 200000 for a video versus now, and now you just can push a button and over a million people can see it. Thanks. And motherfuckers literally recording that shit with an iPhone, bro. Yeah. So yeah. it's a different time, you know. What was it like getting into the music industry, though, fellas? I mean, was it everything that y'all hoped that it would be, or was it a little bit more wilder than y'all expected, man? Hmm. Half and half, I want to say. I think it was something that we expected, but then on the business side, coming in so young and not really understanding the business. Yeah. It was a lot that we needed to learn mm. far as just keeping that business straight. You know yeah. what I'm saying? The music and all that, that's easy because we, you know, we do that. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. And we got the following, we got the fans that back us and show us love everywhere we go. But it's more of that business side that we kind of needed to learn a little bit better. Right. Exactly. Right. Another song right. I got to ask y'all about is that Twinkies, man. That was one of my favorites of all time. Yeah. Talk to me about putting that banger together. Mm. Uh, I think we dealt, we dealt with the time. We dealt with what? was ever important at the mm -hmm. time. So if everybody was riding Twinkies, let's do a song about <laughs> Twinkies. You know what I'm saying? Um, you mentioned I Wish a Motherfucker Would. Right. At that time, uh, Cedric Entertainer had a uh, a stage show. Yeah. And at the end, uh, he was like, I live for the Wish a Nigga Motherfucker Would. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. he started doing skits where I Wish a Motherfucker Would. I'm like, <laughs> shit, that's a song. A song Come yeah. on. You taking it around with it. So when we did Twinkies, we did Twinkies when the biggest rims was Twinkies. Not twinners be on maximum. Exactly. Twins is for girls. <laughs> twins is for your kids. You know what I'm mean? saying? If you ride twins. For twinnies, your big wheel. But back then, why in the fuck they looked so big? Exactly. And now you can put them motherfuckers under an escort. You know what I'm mean? saying? <laughs> so, so when we did Twinkies, man, and like I said, you talking, you talking Dr. Fingers. Yeah. You talking one of the coldest producers. Like, he really honed our style. Yeah. He honed. He made us because when you do um, songs, you got to have somebody like with Jeezy, with Shouty, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So you have um, Zaytoven and Gucci. That's right. Dr. Fingers and Dirty Boys. Exactly. Yeah, and also we had Kevin Cates. I mean, Kevin uh, K.O. K.O. Cates. Yeah, I so know it's K.O. Like yeah. Kev, yeah. He was so, a bad boy yeah, too now. So he oh. gave us them real hard bangers, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Rick Rock. Gave us that Southwest. Yeah, yeah. But, but the mecca of Dirty came from, and the sound of Dirty came from Dr. Fingers, man. Like, he built those beats around us.